What's up everyone? This is Fluent Pilot. It's good to have you back. Here is a new video. As promised, today we are going to be talking about idiomatic expressions and the way you can use them at your aviation English exam. So here are my tips for you. So, idioms. This video was, by the way, inspired by a true story. One of my friends and my students, actually, was refused a level 5 grade because allegedly he hadn't been using idiomatic expressions that much. So, he was literally told something like, Okay, that was a very nice performance, but unfortunately, there were no idioms, so we cannot give you level 5. Sorry. Just like that. Sounds like complete craziness, but that's actually happened to him. According to Doc9835, for level 5 or 6, you gotta be idiomatic. That's true. But the very same document reads that this does not imply that idiomatic usages are a desirable feature of radio telephony communications. Use of idioms is an obstacle to intelligibility and mutual understanding, so should therefore be avoided, or avoiding jargon and idioms whenever possible and being aware of the difficulty they may present will help make plain language clearer. Quite controversial, isn't it? So here is the thing. Unless we are dealing with radio communication, say, when you are going through an interview part of your exam, and you are interacting with your examiner, you got to be prepared to inject a couple of idioms here and there just to make sure that they will not use formal grounds to deprive you of your well-deserved level 5 or level 6 certificate. So let's talk about what I think is the best approach here and also go through some actual idioms and place them in aviation context so that you always have that ace up your sleeve you use it and you pass your aviation English exam with flying colors. So what in the world is an idiom anyway? An idiom is a phrase or an expression that has a metaphorical, that is not literal, meaning. Raining cats and dogs, a piece of cake, to miss the boat, to go the extra mile or around the clock are idioms. The problem is, when you're not a native speaker, they might be difficult to understand and memorize. More to that, if you go for really exotic ones at your exam, no guarantees that anyone else in the room knows what you're talking about. The easiest and the most organic way to use idioms, in my opinion, is to use them to help you arrange your ideas, basically as so-called discourse markers or introductory phrases. For example, phrases like in a nutshell or to wrap it all up are great to introduce your concluding remarks. Let's assume you are going through a lengthy story of what it takes to become a pilot. You tell them about all the training, the ground school, building hours, getting endorsements for IFR and multi-engine, the medical, the English certificate and so on and so forth. And in the end you say, so in a nutshell, it's a very complicated path that consumes lots of your time and your money. So you gotta be really passionate about it in order not to give up halfway. These two are pretty good to let your examiner know that you are about to conclude your answer. Right, moving on. Just for the record or get something straight. Use them to introduce your own opinion, especially when your opinion is different. The pilots of airplane A confused the traffic controls instructions, but just for the record, the flight crew of airplane B didn't do much to minimize the risks. They could have adjusted the taxiing speed as visibility was seriously impaired by that heavy fog. Or, weather is a serious factor, of course, but let me get it straight. Pilot error accounts for more than a half of all airplane crashes. So again, the best part about these four is that they will fit pretty much everything. Okay, it's time now for some other interesting yet simple examples. The next on the list is a milestone. 
which means an exceptionally significant or important event or situation in someone's life. There's a lot of aviation contexts, of course, where you might want to use it, like the jet engine appeared to be one of the biggest milestones in the aviation history. It's reliable, it's simple, and airplanes can now fly faster and higher. Or, the first solo flight is a milestone in every pilot's life. At least it was for me. I still remember that day, and so on and so forth. Next, stumbling block, which means a challenge or an obstacle that prevents from accomplishing something. So where can you use that? Getting down to the nitty-gritty of matter coding and significant weather chart notation was a real stumbling block to passing my commercial license oral exam. Oh, here we go. Another item. Nice. Okay, next. To be on the safe side. It's one of my personal favorites, by the way. It literally means in order to avoid potential problems or challenges. And a very close to it, to err on the side of caution meaning to act in a cautious way, to avoid risky and irresponsible behavior. Again, there are lots of aviation scenarios where you can use those two. The total fuel on board calculated by the dispatch officer was okay, but to be on the safe side, we decided to tank an extra ton of fuel. And it turned out to be a smart decision. Or, do you gusty win? The crew erred on the side of caution and chose to perform the landing with flaps 30. Okay, let's cover a couple more. Have the battle, meaning a significant part of an effort or an important step towards achieving something. It stems from an older proverb, the first blow is half the battle. I don't think it will be difficult for you to put it into an aviation context. Getting your ICAO Aviation English Certificate is half the battle of getting hired by an airline. Very true for some countries, isn't it? Configuring the cross-feed valve and fuel pumps was half the battle, as the fuel leak was no longer a factor, and they managed to safely make it to the destination airport. Finally, on the same page. It is used to talk about two or more people thinking in the same manner, when they have the same understanding of something, and so on. Before the flight, pilots and the cabin crew brief in the cabin, this gets everyone on the same page for the time of the intended flight. Or, flying in some geographical areas is challenging. Pilots need to be on the same page and ahead of the nose at all times of the flight. Okay guys, let's call it a day. Here's a list of idioms that we used in this video. There are of course gazillions of other idioms out there. Those were just a few examples embedded into aviation context to make your exam preparation process a bit easier. But you could certainly extend this list of yours. A red-eye flight, a top-notch pilot, a jump seat, etc. There's lots of nice stuff out there, right? Anyway, I hope this was of value. Join our community, check out the website and Instagram. Give this video a thumb up. I like when you like the videos, and it motivates me to create more content. Okay, thanks, see you next time. Cheers!